Hello everybody, let us study Holtz. Either you know German and you know that it stands for wood, or you have listened to this talk and you know that it is the high order entropy encoding of Lambdasiv factor distances. This is joint work together with Gonzalo Navarro and Nicola Pretzer. In this talk, we focus on the Lambdasiv 77 factorization and in particular on the distance representations. Let me briefly review what the Lambdasiv 77 or shortly LC factorization is. So it is a text factorization. Given your text T, it factorizes it into factors F1, F2, and so on. It is very popular and it is used for lossless data compression. So you can find it in programs like gzip, zip, 7zip, and so on. But the idea of LC is that it reads the text from left to right while maintaining the red text in the dictionary and replacing the remaining text with references into this dictionary. In our variant, we want that each factor has a reference. So we need to preprocess our dictionary to have suitable references. And here the idea is that given, for instance, this example string, we prepend all distinct characters appearing in the text to the text. In this case, the text is binary, so we have just prepended two characters. And by doing this pre-handling, we obey or guarantee the property that each reference has a length of at least one. So what does actually LZ do? So it always takes the longest candidate as a reference while factorizing the text into the factors f1 until fc, where given that the factor fx starts at a text position j, that it has a reference to a suffix that starts at a previously already processed text position, and the suffix has fx as a prefix. We start the factorization after our prepended characters because they don't belong to the factorization, we just need them for the references. So here what we do is we query what, what, what's the longest previously appearing prefix is. Like here A appears previously but not AB. So this is the right answer. Then we have B appearing here again but not BB. Then BA appears previously, but not BAB, and so on. Now, what we can do is that we can represent such a, a Z parse by representing each factor as a pair of distance and length. And this gives us these four pairs, where the green pair represents this green factor, and it has a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, meaning that we copy from distance 4 two characters. We obtain compression by encoding the pairs with an universal coder like Elias Gamma code. Finally, just by having these pairs we can decode, so restoring the original text back by just looking at the information of these pairs, like here this means copy from distance 1 one character, from distance 3 one character, distance for two characters and so on. The problem is, however, that these distances do not compress well because they can be arbitrarily large. What we now propose in this talk is a new representation, meaning that uh, we want to find an alternative distance rep representation. In our setting, we assume that we have already Preprocess the text with an LC algorithm so we know the factor starting positions and the lengths. And our distance is now based on a list maintaining all prefixes of the red text. And this list is sorted in collex order or collexicographically. We call that distance and holds offsets for high order lapusive. Let me first remind you what the collex order is. So the idea is that we sort the strings according to the lexicographic order of their reversed counterparts. So we have here four strings which are already sorted in the lexicographic order. 
and the first one, it's the smallest one in this order, but not in the collects order, it's there the largest one. And that's because it ends with a B and all other strings end with an A. I also need the following notations, like from I to J is a substring, if I remove it to the J I get the suffix. And note that the string starts here with minus one because we are prepended to characters, so a substring starting at minus one is a prefix. In this talk we just focus on binary alphabets, but we can very easily extend that to general ordered alphabets. And finally, epsilon denotes an empty string. So, what is holds exactly? For that, we define with tp the prefix up to position p. And not only that, because we already started minus 2, which is just an empty string, and then we continue with the prefixes. Now suppose we want to compute a factor fx starting at uh, position p. What we do is that we arrange all these previous prefixes in the collex order such that we get this ordered list where pi denotes the ranking of the prefixes in the collex order. So we get this picture of these prefixes and we're at position p where we want to compute the holds offset of fx. With that we visualize this list now vertically. So we start at rank 1 until rank p minus 2, uh, p plus 2. And we are here in this picture and what we want to find is this prefix after which fx is. And this is uh, here visualized and we say that it has the rank r. And what we also want to find are those prefixes after which there is another occurrence of fx. And we want to take those, or this one, which is closest to the prefix of rank r, which we call, um, which, uh, whose rank we call t. Like in this figure, it has again fx after the prefix, and let's assume this, is, this one is the closest one, and then we say this has this rank t, and what we do is that we say that the halt offset of this factor is just the difference between r and t. Now to give you a concrete example, let's look at the following slide, where we have already taken these prefixes and sort them in collex order, giving this table here. We want to find the so holds offset of the first factor, meaning that we want to take the prefix up to this position, which is t0. And for that we also need the remaining suffixes, so we see that after t0 there is the, this factor and what we want to find is the another prefix after which again the same, suffix, uh, same factor appears like here. And then we can see that this, uh, the r, which is the rank of this uh, prefix up to our position where the factor starts, which is t0, it has the rank 2, and our reference has the rank 3. So we take the difference r minus t, which is minus 1, and we're done. Also note that this, the holds offset can be negative, like in this case. What we next do is that we add t1 into our list and query for the position 2. So what we do is that we look at where t1 is, so the previous uh, suffix, it has rank 2 and we know that the factor has length 1, it's a b, so we look at the remaining suffixes, where is another b, there is another b, and it has the rank 1, we can take the difference and get the whole offset. We add t2, now we are at position 3, we look at where t2 was, it was at, at um, rank 5, it has the uh, remaining suffix ba, 
and <clears throat> we look at um, where is the another occurrence of PA. It's uh, up there, and we know that it, uh, the T is 1, and we take the difference, which is 4. Next, we add 3 and 4 into our table and query for disposition. Now, the last inserted prefix is T4, it has rank 4. We have BB as our factor, and there is just another BB up there. So, this gives us this rank, and the difference is 2. Okay, now we know what the holds offsets are, but do they perform well in practice? Well, we did experiments on the pizza and chili dataset corpus. So we took for each dataset a 20 megabyte prefix. We computed the LSE factorization, encoded the pairs with uh, Elias gamma code, and compared the compression ratios. You can see here on the left various datasets with various numbers of alphabet sizes, different numbers of factors. And this one denotes the zero, second, and fourth order of empirical entropy. On the right, we have a comparison of the compression ratios, where lower means better. We compared our holds offsets with the rightmost distances, meaning in the rightmost parsing, we take among all reference candidates this candidate that produces the less the least distance, meaning it's the rightmost reference. You can see that in most of the time, Holtz performs better, with here an exception for pitches, where on the other hand, for pitches, the entropy is quite high. So we can empirically say that whenever the entropy is low, then Holtz performs better. To understand that, please read either the paper or I just give here a small sketch, meaning that the idea is that contexts before the references are similar to the contexts before the factors in low order entropy text, and therefore the offsets are small. It's kind of a similar observation for the Boris Wheeler transform or shortly BWT. Uh, which obtains a compression uh, close to the kth order entropy by so called compression boosting. Okay, but a main question still remains, and that is how to actually compute holds. So, what is the actual algorithmic pro uh, problem behind holds, and that's how to maintain the collex order of the prefixes? Our idea is to use uh, dynamic BWT and use it to index the, pre the, the processed text in reverse order. So the BWT maintains the suffixes in lexicographic order, but applying it on the reverse text means that it maintains the prefixes in collex order, so exactly what we need. And the nice thing is that we can maintain it in space in the empirical order entropy using just about linear, near, nearly linear time, thanks to these two achievements. So, to understand how to compute holds with the BWT, let me briefly remind how our example text looks like, where these gray characters are these prepended two characters. What we do is that we revert the text and append a dollar sign, which is artificial character and smaller than all other characters appearing in the text. Then we pre-compute the BWT on our gray characters, and we obey the invariant that we have already computed the BWT on all processed characters when computing the respective factor starting at uh, position TP, meaning we are at position P and have already put these characters from yellow to blue into the BWT in the reverse order from blue to yellow. Okay, for our example here, uh, the BWT looks in the first place like this. 
And now it's very easy to find the Holtz offset for the first factor, which just consists of uh, one character. The idea is that we need to take the previous prefix, and this prefix is represented in the BWT by the place where the dollar is in the F color. That we know already R, and now we need to find a prefix after which there is again an A, which means that we look in the L column for all A's, but there's just one A. So we know already where the T is, and we just need to take the difference between R and T and R done for this factor. Next we want to add A into the BWT to let it grow. And for that we use the following trick, that we just sw swap A with dollar, then count in this range the number of A's, which is in this case 1, and we insert at the first place, because it's just one A, at the first place in F, where there is an A, the dollar, and are done. So we get the BWT with A prepended. Next we query for the next factor, the second factor, which is again a, a single character factor, so again, we know where the R is, that's a dollar. And we query for all Bs, because it's a B. We determine T and R, and N are done. Now we want to insert this B, and proceed analogously. So it's the second B. So we look up the second B in F, and insert the, the dollar. Now it's more interesting, because we have a B A, and we do something similar like a backward search step, but because the BWT is built in the reverse text, we actually do the backward search on now the reverse pattern. So we, this is basically the first character we search, it's a B, so in the B range we take the A's, because it's the next character, and there's just one A, so we're done, but it does not give us yet the correct rank, because we have to backtrack where the first character starts in L. So we go back and find here the first character, and this corresponds to the T rank. And now we can just take the difference and are done. Next we add the B into the BWT, and then the A. The A corresponds to the third A, so we add at the third position uh, third A in F, the dollar, and we query at this position here um, for the next factor which has here the dollar, so we know the R value, and we do again the backward search step for B gives us this range, and in this range we find the next B, and then because we have just one B, we do backtracking and find here is the starting position of this BB and now the the difference between R and T gives us the Holtz offset. So in summary we have we know that the LC compressors usually represent factors by pairs of lengths and distances and in practice these distances compress badly because their values can be huge and we propose holds offsets for exchanging uh, as exchange with these distances. And uh, such a holds distance is a distance within the list of prefixes of the red text maintained in collects order. For low entropy text, holds offsets provide empirically better compression ratios. And for future work, the main problem is that this dynamic BWT is quite slow, so we want to speed it up and make it more efficient. And that's all. Thanks for listening and any questions are welcome.